Hey, what's up YouTube? Waltz How To's and Reviews. Today I'm making this video for people that were in the same situation I was in to where you would like a home theater room, you have an extra room, and you're not sure what to do with it, and be like, oh, it'd be cool to make it a movie room, you know, have this big screen and whatnot. But my initial assumption was it was going to be really expensive. And when I did the research, I was actually astonished at how affordable it is and how you can actually do it for a really cost-effective price and you're gonna have diminishing returns meaning if you double your budget from 2,000 to 4,000 you're not getting that much more for that extra 2,000 I don't think the average person is gonna be able to see like well that looks like it cost two thousand dollars more now when it comes to the movie room you're gonna need besides the room three things but first let's talk about the room one assumption that I thought is you're gonna need a very large room to do this and I learned you actually can do it in as small as a bedroom. This movie screen behind me is 165 inches. It's huge. And I was thinking the projector would have to be very far back to be able to get the entire screen. I learned that they make short throw projectors that throw a huge image in a very short amount of distance. You know, this 165 inch screen, the projector is actually right above this camera. So it's able to, in a very short distance, make a huge image and it's crystal clear, crisp, it's amazing. It blew my expectations away. I really wasn't expecting it to look as good as it does. But if, if you have like just an extra bedroom and you don't wanna make it a guest bedroom and you're tossing around that idea, that's why I'm making this video is kinda of show you how to do it. You're going to need the projector and you're gonna get a short throw projector. You're gonna need a screen and you're gonna need a sound system. And all of these things are way more affordable than I would have thought. So for under $1,000, you can get an amazing projector. Now, if you want 4K, it might be a little bit more than that. And I did build this movie room in 2014, but today even, it's 2020, I don't really watch anything in 4K. Most of the stuff I'm streaming on Hulu, Netflix, those kind of things, it's 1080p. So it's not really there yet. And I would argue, you know, like what, how much content do you actually watch in 4K? But even if you wanna get 4K, it's not as expensive as you might think. Okay, so the screen, there are very, very affordable screens out there. I'm talking like under 50 bucks for ginormous screens. Now if you really, now this one, I did a lot of research on, I'll show what it is. They don't actually sell it on Amazon anymore, but it was like, you know, I wanted a high contrast, like screen actually made for projections. It was 200 bucks. And you know, if you compare that 165 inch TV, you're talking over 15, 20, that I don't even think they make them to be honest. All right, and then the sound system, you know, I just got a Sony. It's got six speakers, two in the back, three in the front, and a subwoofer. And it is really good sound, you know. I know there's much better sound out there, and I know gearheads and audio nuts are going to be like, oh man, that's trash. But I'm telling you, just take an everyday average person, sit them down, have them listen to a $300 system like this one, have them listen to a $1,000 system, and I bet you they don't know what to listen for. They don't really know the difference. So for them, spending that extra 600 bucks, 700 bucks, it's really not gonna give them much value. I understand if you're huge into audio, you know, you wanna get a $10,000 system, great, and obviously it's better, but the average person, are they really gonna be able to tell? Are they really gonna be able to hear it? I would argue not, I don't think they will, you know? Like maybe one goes louder, that's all they're gonna be thinking, oh, this one's louder, that one's not. I just don't think they're gonna notice it. So you don't have to spend a ton of money on it and technology is pretty affordable these days. You can get a great sound system that's gonna do your movie playing and all that, completely surround sound. I got it for 300 bucks. So I spent 300 on the sound system, I spent 200 on the TV screen, and I spent 780 bucks on the projector. Now, I mean, let's be honest, you can use a lawn chair, you can get a super cheap chair, probably already have some furniture that you can put in there and sit on and watch movies on, so. Okay, so here's the actual room. It's a mess, I'm sorry, I got kids. I got a trampoline in here. It's a long room, okay? You can see it's not that wide though, it's very short. There's the projector up on the ceiling. And I'm not going to make it look amazing, but it's functional, it works well. Here's the movie theater screen. You can see it's just cheap board and stapled to keep the screen tight. Um, it literally goes, I made it as big as I possibly could. So from the ceiling down to the floor. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't go any bigger really. And I got a speaker here, I got a speaker here, 
I got a speaker on the floor for the middle. I got one in the back over here, another one in the back over here, and then there's a subwoofer behind the couch. It's this cheap $300 Sony Blu-ray player. My point is you can do this super cheap. These blackout blinds are like three bucks at Home Depot, all right? I do, you do want it dark in the room. You know, you can watch it with the lights on. It's actually, Alexa, turn on the projector. We'll let this kick on, it takes a minute to turn on, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like with the lights on. So here's with the lights on, full blast. So it is a little washed out, but I mean, better than I would have suspected. If you just dim the lights a little bit, you can see it starts looking really good. Turn them off all the way. Here is what the actual picture looks like, at least through a camera lens. And I just wanted to show the colors, in my opinion, look amazing. It's clean, it's crisp, it's clear. I was really impressed by it. So here is a movie aspect ratio where it's more of a widescreen and my affordable $300 surround sound system. Let me just show you, at least through the camera, how good it sounds. So again, obviously you can't really hear much because you're listening it through. It's only as good as my microphone and whatnot, but it sounds incredible. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to buy a projector. The most important thing is you need to know what size screen you're gonna have and how far away you're gonna put the projector from the screen before you shop for projectors. Reason being is you might be able to eliminate half of the projectors. What you're trying to avoid is finding one that you like but then realizing it's not gonna work for your situation. So it is difficult. Every projector is gonna have different, they call it throw or how far away it can be. So I just go to a projector and I usually search, you know, I press control find for distance, feet, throw those kind of things you can see here it says it can make 35 inches to 200 inches but for that 200 inch screen size you have to be 21 feet away now you'll find that the average projector you need a, a good amount of distance so if you're working with something like a bedroom or how in my case my room was not very wide i knew i needed to look for a short throw projector so you can just search for short throw projectors and here you can see, you know, it can make a hundred inch screen size from just three feet away. So right then and there, we'll eliminate roughly half of the projectors if you know you need a short throw projector. The short throws are a little bit more expensive. Nowadays, it's really not that bad. One last thing to consider with that is if you're gonna mount it on the ceiling, some projectors, generally the cheaper ones, you have to have it almost level with the screens. You have to like place it on a table and you probably wanna avoid that unless that works for your certain situation. If you're gonna mount it on the ceiling like mine, you just need to make sure that it has you know, a flexible installation, a keystone effect to where you can put it on the ground, you can put it on the ceiling, and it's gonna adjust the screens so it looks square and doesn't have like a trapezoid effect. Most of the projectors have that, but before you buy, I would just double check, hey, this is gonna work for your specific install. That's why I'm saying knowing where you're going to put the projector, knowing what size screen you have before you go shopping will help you greatly. The next thing we're going to look at is contrast ratio. And this is another thing that's used as a marketing ploy and it's really hard to understand what is it exactly saying. So generally I'll search for, you know, contrast ratio and you can see it's kind of vague here. Contrast ratio is enhanced to provide balanced visual experience. What does that mean? What's nice about Amazon is they do break down these charts for you when you're comparing and they can show you the different contrast ratios. And typically what you're gonna find is the higher the contrast ratio, normally the more expensive the projector is gonna be. So what contrast ratio actually means, you know, when this is saying 5,000 to one, it means when it's making the screen, the brightest spot is gonna be 5,000 times brighter than the dimmest spot. So if you have 3,000 to one, 6,000 to one, this projector in theory should be able to give you a lot more contrast, a lot more detail. However, this leads me into my next super important point. There is a reason why this projector costs less than this projector, even though it has a higher contrast ratio. Whenever you see 1080p supported, that means that it's not giving a true high definition signal. When you see native 1080p, that means that it is. So if we actually look at this guy down in the specifics, it's saying that it's giving 1280 by 800 native solution. If that bottom number is not 1080, it's not a true HD image. When it says supported, it means it can take the signal and it can 
display an image, but it's not going to be a true 1080p HD image. It's going to be 1280 by 800 where if you scroll to the top and actually look at this guy, it's going to show you it's giving a native 1080p signal. What that means is there's 1080 lines of images stacked on top of each other. And in this case, there's only 800 meaning that you've got about 20% more information. So the contrast ratio isn't always the true end all be all of, hey, this is gonna be a better image. So if you want an apples to apples comparison, you need to know, do I want true HD? And if I do, you wouldn't even wanna be looking at these other projectors. You'd only wanna be comparing the contrast ratios of true native 1080p. Same thing if you were to jump up to 4K, but you also need to be careful. There's a lot of marketing used here. So when you see dynamic contrast ratio, this is saying 60,000 to one, that's just in a totally different league than a lot of other projectors. The reason is because it's saying dynamic contrast ratio. You wanna look for native. If you're comparing native contrast ratio, you're gonna get a better apples to apples comparison. And we'll get to the different technologies in a minute, but there's pros and cons to each one. But even when you're looking at one technology versus the other, they have the same contrast ratio. The actual image produced might not be equivalent. This is only 2200 lumens, where this $100 projector is 3800 lumens. So it's like, how come this one's, you know, got more lumens, but it's so much cheaper. It's because of that contrast ratio, as well as it says it supports 1080p, but this one's only showing you a 480p image, you know, 800 by 480. So you want to make sure if you're going to compare apples to apples, make sure the native resolution is the same and then start comparing the contrast ratios. So let's talk a little bit about lumens. Now, what that means is how bright the screen is. If you are going to have it in a room like mine where I don't mind covering the windows and I want it to be similar to a movie theater where you watch movies in a low light situation, then the lumens is not going to be as important versus if you're trying to make this your main TV that's in the living room where your windows are going to be open, you are going to want a lot of lumens. And you'll notice if you want a high contrast ratio with a lot of lumens, it's going to get more and more expensive. So that's something you're going to have to balance out. Now, if you're going to have it in a dark room, you're going to put it in a bedroom, it's going to be pretty dark. I wouldn't worry about the lumens as much. I would just try to keep it at least 1500, 2000. My specific one that I showed you was 2200 lumens with a 10,000 to one contrast ratio. This is the new version that they offer. That's 800 bucks. And you know, now that it's 2020, you get a 15,000 to one contrast ratio and it's still 2200 lumens. All right, so the last thing that we'll talk about is there's two main technologies with projectors. There's DLP and there's LCD. There are some other ones, but those are not a budget uh, projector. Those are thousands of thousands of dollars. And in my opinion, spending an extra four or 5,000, unless you have a lot of expendable money, I just wouldn't get the value of like something that is really hard to tell is a little bit cleaner and crisper of an image. Back to the point though, basically the people that make LCD projectors are going to say that their projector is better and the people that make DLP projectors are going to say their projector is better. So which one is better? It's, it's really not a simple answer and basically my research in a nutshell is if you're looking for the lower end cost, like maybe that $100 projector to $300 range, you're probably gonna be good with an LCD projector because there is this rainbow effect that can happen. It's gonna happen with less expensive DLP technologies. Now, once you get over 400 bucks, I would say you're gonna be fine going with DLP or LCD. They're both gonna have pros and cons. Today's technology, they're, they're both pretty impressive. But I went with the DLP, and the biggest reason I went with the DLP is the claim that over time the DLP's quality is going to hold up and you're also going to have a lot less maintenance. So with LCD, you're going to have to replace the bulb more, and DLP manufacturers will claim that the image quality is going to be reduced and it'll never be as good as it was the day that you bought it after years pass on. Whereas the DLP, you don't have to change the bulb as much. It's design doesn't have the image quality suffer over time. That's the claim, I'm not saying it's true, but that's the claim. All I can speak to is I do have a DLP. 
I've never had to do any maintenance, never changed the light source in it, and I can't tell the difference. It looks just as good today as when I first turned it on in 2014. I'm sure the image quality probably has gone down, but I can't tell the difference. That's why I chose that DLP version over the LCD is just that simple fact alone. And now, you know, six years later, I'm happy I went that route because I haven't had to do any maintenance. When I have friends come over to watch a movie, it works. And I'm not like, oh man, I gotta go buy a new bulb and change it. So that's been great. One last note I will say about the DLP versus LCD, the really expensive projectors that, you, that they use in the movie theaters are DLP technology. So I wanted to break these projectors up into three categories for you. Below HD, HD with low contrast, and HD with high contrast. So below HD, your best deal you're gonna find, 100 bucks, it's only 2000 to one contrast ratio, but you can tell people, based on the reviews, feel like they're getting the value for the money spent on this guy. Now, this one jumps up to 800p, so definitely a better image, good contrast ratio, plenty bright, for 180 bucks, I mean, people again think they're getting a good value. You can tell by the reviews here. So this is the two best under actual HD. Now, this is an actual HD projector. It's got really good reviews, $240, 5,001 contrast ratio. I think this is your best value if you wanna go true HD and be as low price as possible. So if you wanna get into a good contrast ratio, True HD, I think this is a great projector. I have a BenQ, my model is outdated and stuff, but 700 bucks, it's a 15,000 to one contrast ratio. Okay, so you can see 100 inch screen, eight feet away. For my situation, I wanted 165 inches, roughly eight feet away. The same one, just a short throw, jumps up 100 bucks. Everything else is the same, it's just a short throw projector. So in this case, it's about 100 bucks more if that's what you're looking for. If you want 4K, you know, this one's 700. This is the 4K version and it jumps up to 1300. So you're looking at about 600 more dollars. If that's worth it for you, that's there for you. It does drop it down to a 10,000 to one contrast ratio. And then I believe for 200 more dollars, you can jump back up to even higher contrast ratio, at least from BenQ. So just wanted to give you guys some ideas and hopefully that's enough information so you can you know, take that and run with it and shop for a projector that's gonna fit your specific needs best. Okay, when it comes to shopping for a screen, first thing is gonna be size. Just because your projector can do 300 inch screen size doesn't mean you're gonna be able to find a screen in that size and it can be difficult to actually find the size screen that you're looking for. Unfortunately, the screen I bought through Amazon is no longer listed. A big thing that's gonna affect price is how you're going to put up your screen. So if you want it to come with its own frame, then it's gonna be more expensive versus if it doesn't come with a frame, it's gonna be a lot more cost effective. And just note that you're gonna have to figure out some kind of way to put it up. Now you can just put it to the wall, but there is supposed to be some tension on it. So just keep in mind if you wanna do it yourself or if you wanna just buy that included. And if it comes with a stand, that's obviously gonna be in the room, which might be a bit awkward. So just something to think about when you buy the screen. Now, I don't think it's as big of a deal getting too much into the specs, but just to give you an idea, a big thing is gain. So it might say, a lot of them don't even list the gain, but you can see here it says a 1.1 gain. That just means that it's reflecting roughly all of the light coming back to you. You know, if it was like a 0.7 gain, that means that a lot of the light is being lost. And even some of them will say like 1.3 gain, it's gonna reflect more light back at you. The other thing is the viewing angle, 160 degrees means that you can be sitting off to the side and still be able to view it good. It's still gonna reflect light into your eye well. The narrower viewing angles aren't very common and a lot of times those are actually more expensive because they're trying to not reflect ambient light and just give you reflection of the light that's being projected at it from the projector. But again, I don't think it's as important. And you know, you can get into the expensive ones where you can put speakers behind it and stuff, but we're talking about a budget build here. So the last two things I'll say is when it's talking about size, like the ratio, the 16 by nine, that is what your TV screen is. The other common one is this like two by 35, which is basically just ultra wide, which is actually how a lot of high-end movies are shot and that ultra wide and then they cut it down to a 16 by nine. Or it's when you're watching a movie and the top and the bottom of the movie screen is cut off so it's a really ultra wide angle. That's what this is, but I wouldn't recommend buying a screen that size because then when you watch a lot of your TV, 
the sides are going to be cut off instead of the top and the bottom but most of the time 16 by 9 unless you want something different than what your tv is just go 16 by 9 keep it simple all right and then in my opinion the most important thing is you'll see a lot of the screens say crease free or resistant wrinkle free and that they won't have creases that's what mine said and i had the option to buy it and have it shipped rolled or folded and the rolled option was more expensive so i opted to do the fold option where they folded it and just mailed it to me and there was a crease in mine for a long time it was months and i tried to do certain things like a hair dryer and this and that to get rid of it but if you viewed it at a certain angle you could see it it did go away i honestly don't know how long it took to go away it definitely took months if not a whole year but it did kind of drive me crazy and oh if somebody sits in that spot they're going to see that crease and maybe it was just noticeable to me but if that's going to be a deal for you even if it says wrinkle free crease free if they give you the option to buy it rolled or if you're looking at two different ones and you know this one is going to be shipped rolled where this one is going to be shipped folded i would strongly urge you and recommend get the one that's going to be shipped rolled so you don't have to have that annoying crease in there when it comes to buying a good sound system i think there's three things that are really important here's where i think it is important to actually look at the reviews because a lot of times you'll be surprised where like for this one oh it looks cool it's got all these speakers it's only a hundred bucks but less than half the people gave it a five star review which is just an alarming thing to me it's only a hundred bucks so you know in a way you get what you pay for but there's other options that are close to a hundred bucks where the majority of the people who bought it are happy and satisfied with it like this one that i recommended it's you know 75 percent of the people still a good sample base and i would take that into consideration the second thing i would take into consideration is if you want to go wireless or wired if you go with something that's wired it's going to be more cost effective you can jump up from like 2.1 to 5.1 and still keep the price down but you're going to have to do something with the wires the cable management you can buy stuff that hides the wires along the baseboard of your trim but just think about your room is that going to work and also it's just added time and labor for you to install it now the last thing I'll talk about is today's technology has come a long ways. It would almost be beneficial to go into a Best Buy and listen to some different things. See if you can tell the difference between something that's 100 and 500. Because maybe for you, you don't really notice the high crisp treble sounds that they're talking about. And when it says like 2.1 versus 5.1 versus 7.1, the higher that number basically is, the more true surround sound it's going to be, and it depends on your audio input. If you're not giving the correct audio input, you're never going to hear that little bird chirp in the background. Today's technology has come really far to where even one sound bar, like that Bose one up here, almost sounds like it's coming from all over the place. But if you want true surround sound, you're probably going to be looking for something that's got a couple speakers in the back just for those little tiny nuances where you'll hear that bird chirp. If that's important to you, then then go that route. Like, you know, here is a really good one. It's renewed, but it's 200 bucks and it's got the speakers behind you, the one in the front and the bass. I don't think you're gonna be able to beat this deal, obviously, because it's renewed. I'm not sure what the uh, brand new price is. I'll put this link in the description, but you can play around with that. And really, it's all about what's important to you to where I think you would benefit from actually going to a store and listening to it. Again, this one has the couple speakers in the back, the one in the front. Today's technology, the one in the front is amazing. It can sound like it's coming from the left or the right, even though it's just one speaker in the front. And then if you like those bassy noises, if you don't get one that comes with a subwoofer, you're not gonna get that deep, rich bass. So that's all I'll say about the sound. There's just a plethora of options, but again, I think really actually looking at the reviews, it's telling you at this price point, did people feel like they got a good value? And you're gonna want a big sample size. If there's only like 50 reviews, I mean, a lot of that could be just people that work for the company trying to boost the product. But once you get over, you know, a thousand reviews, 1600 reviews, you know, there's a lot of people that have actually bought in this and actually giving their feedback on, did they get enough value at that price point? So obviously all the links are in the description. When I put you could get a setup for as low as $300, these are the products I was thinking about. You know, this screen is 40 bucks. You can see really good reviews. This projector is $100. You can see really good reviews and this sound bar is $130 and you can see really good reviews. So we got 130 plus the 100 for the projector, you're at 230 plus an extra 40 for this guy, you're at 270, leaves an extra 30 bucks for tax. 